Hello everyone, today I'm going to be setting up a new Ubuntu Cloud Init template on my Proxmox server. Cloud Init is widely used in cloud environments such as VPS providers to quickly provision new virtual machines. It allows you to specify various aspects of a Linux VM before it is created and then when the VM boots, it reads the data provided to it and makes any modifications that are needed. You're able to specify things like the host name, DNS servers, DNS search domains, SSH public keys, IP address of the server, usernames, and more. Proxmox has a great set of options exposed in the GUI which makes things more approachable. However, there are additional options to cloud in it that aren't exposed, such as additional repositories, installing apt packages, running commands during install, and even more. This could be automated if you wanted to have an always up-to-date template for your favorite distro, my preference normally is Ubuntu's LTS servers, but I'm going to be creating an STS or short-term release in this guide as I already have an LTS template. So to get started, we're going to do a Google search for our favorite distro, in my case Ubuntu, and then we'll add cloud image to the end of it. Ubuntu has a repository, cloud-images.ubuntu.com. And we'll go to the latest version of Ubuntu currently. And then we'll go to current. And then we want the amd64-img. We'll copy that link address. Then we'll go to my, open my SSH connection to my Proxmox server. Do a wget and the link we just copied. Now we're going to want to add uh, an additional apt package here called libguest uh, fs-tools. So we're going to do an apt update y and and apt install libguest fs-tools-y just to speed this up a little bit. I already have it, so I'm not going to get it installed. And then what we want to do is we want to do vert-customize-a, we're going to do the image we just downloaded dash dash install and then we're going to install q m gimu guest agent that'll install the guest agent on the virtual machine now that that's done we can go ahead and create our VM that we'll use as our template. So this is going to be 9001. So QM create 9001. Name's going to be a bunch of Haru shit cloud in it. Memory with is two gigs, two cores. The network's going to be Vert.io based on VM bridge one. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and import that disk. Oops. Had an uppercase there. So what this will do is it's going to import the disk to that VM. The next step here is we're going to add the drive. So we'll add a SCSI device and then attach it to the thin disk that we just added. So we'll run this command that's now added it. Next, we'll specify that that's going to be our boot disk. Then we'll add our cloud init drive, which is an IDE drive. Where I have LVM-thin, you'll want to replace with your storage repository. Next step is going to be adding the VGA output, which in our case is going to be serial zero, because that's what the cut in image is like on Proxmox. Next, we'll set the agent to enabled. Oops.
There we go. All right. So it's QM set 9001 dash dash agent enabled equals zero. So now if we go to our 9001 options, QMU age, guest agent is disabled. And if we go back, we'll do enabled one. Go back here. And we see it's enabled. So we're good to continue. And then the only other thing we need to do is go ahead and convert this to a template. So now that that's converted to a template, that'll take a minute. It'll go from having this icon to, yep, there we go. So our I, this looks good now. So we'll just make sure, so this is our name. We'll just go ahead and make sure that everything looks good here, which it does. Now, if we go to cloud in it, we can set our user up so we can go ahead and say something like Ubuntu. Our DNS domain, you can do however you want. I'm going to do the more.tech and I'm going to use Cloudflare servers. Your public key, you can read from a file if you want, or you can paste it. So in my case, I will go grab my public key. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and configure our IP. I'm going to do 172.16.100.198 and 172.16.100.1 uh, slash 24. I have had an issue in the past with DHCP. I don't know if that's been fixed. Um, I'm going to hit regenerate image. So now what we can do is we can clone this. We can say that this is going to be VMID 151. We'll go ahead and call this the more test. Um, we'll just call this VM01. Linked clone is fine. Then we'll hit clone. You'll see VM 151 get put on. Now, if we hit console, we'll get the serial output of the VM. Let's start it. We're booting from disk. Now, one thing I should have done is expand on the hardware. I should have expanded the uh, hard disk. It'll only boot with this size of hard drive now. If you edit the hard drive, it'll automatically expand to fill that size that you set. So instead of being 2.3 gigabytes, it'll be whatever size you set the drive to. But a nice, quick, easy way to see if CloudInit was successful is if this boots up and the host name is the name we specify here. Actually, we have a good sign root at the maw test VM01. So while this is doing that, let me do another clone. We'll go this. It's going to be 152 the maw test VM02. Uh, it's going to be also a linked clone. Now, if I go to my VM, I can change my hard disk. I can hit resize disk, and that's going to be, we'll add 62 gigabytes to that. On cloud in it, we'll go to the IP config, and we'll change it from 199 to, say, 50. And then we'll go ahead and start this VM up also. Now, if we go to test VM, we'll see if this has come up yet. Sometimes this serial interface can get finicky. Yeah, they are definitely meant to be used with SSH keys. But if we go to our summary tab, we have our IP listed, which is good. Over here, we also have our IP listed, which is good. So what we can do is let's grab the IP address and we'll open up Putty. We'll use my private key and we'll connect to the IP address. We'll connect once. Log in as Ubuntu. Oops. And 
think it was a capital. Yep, it was a capital. Perfect. So clear, and we'll do a LFBLK. And you can see we have a 62 gig. Nope. There we go. We have 64.2 gigabytes on SDA. And if I do IP ADDR, obviously we have the IP that we set. And because we can see this information, we know that our QMU agent is working properly. So that's it. All right, everyone. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.